Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today is one of one, one more video of this series of interviews with dancers from all over the world. Today's video I find it really exciting and I hope really interesting for you. So without any more to say, let's introduce the dancer for today's video. Ada González is a Spanish dancer working as a soloist with the National Opera in Bucharest, Romania and previously as a principal dancer in Teatro de Ballet CBU. She's an incredible dancer with beautiful and long lines, but for me, her best attributes are her passion and storytelling, making her a great dramatic dancer. She's also a very intelligent and curious person with many experiences that I think you guys will find really interesting and very inspiring. Let's jump into the conversation. So hello Ada, welcome, welcome to my channel. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. Everything all right? Everything is very good, Perfect. thank you so much. <laughs> okay, uh, first thing I want to say is I want to tell everyone why Ada is here. Well, I, I did a video introduction before, before this conversation, so everyone knows who you are, kind of. You will tell again afterwards, but I want to say why you're here Mm -hmm. because uh, I, did, I did a video talking about success and what success means for me and Ada watched that video and she commented and in her comment it was written her opinion about what success means and what, what, is, what is really for her and the fact that her idea and my idea were kind of similar and at that moment already I thought it would be really nice to bring her here so she can speak about uh, her journey and about her ideas because I think she's a great dancer but she's also a really intelligent person and she had lived through many things so I think it's really nice that she can share with us all about this. What do you think? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll let them see. We'll see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so the first thing I want to ask you is about your studies. How did you, got, how did you get into ballet? Well, um, I was four years old, like many, mm -hmm. many girls uh, when they start ballet and uh, my mom needed to find something for me to do in the afternoons because she was working. So I started going mm -hmm. to ballet a couple of evenings a week. At the beginning, I didn't really like it. I thought it was boring. Um, also, mm -hmm. I think because I had certain qualities and at, when you're so young, every year there's young girls starting, starting, starting. So for maybe, I don't know, I'm saying just three, four years at the beginning of my studies, I did basically the same. So for me, it was very boring. I preferred to do jazz and funky and other disciplines mm -hmm. that I, I did also in the school uh, until I was around 11, 12 years old when I met Rosé Muñoz. I met uh, the woman mm -hmm. that would be my main teacher throughout uh, my, my career. Uh, and she, she made me fall in love with, with dance. And she told me I had conditions, I had nice feet, I had flexibility, musicality, mm -hmm. and she convinced me to go through this uh, hard and crazy journey. And yeah, mm -hmm. so I, w I was 12, and then she, Rosé was a, a prima ballerina in many, many companies mm -hmm. uh, in Europe. So she stopped dancing, and she came back home a year after her, uh, her partner, uh, she had uh, a main partner for a long time in Leipzig, uh, Joan Bosch also stopped dancing and came back home and together they decided to to open a school and this is where mm -hmm. I did my main my main training did they had a specific style the school or it was like just uh, how they felt about dance you like you was uh, like you studied Baganova or yeah Yes, they did Vaganova when they were young. So they, they studied in Instituto del Teatro when they were young. And then their last years, they both graduated in Vaganova school. So the base for mm -hmm. both uh, teachers was Vaganova. But then they, the whole experience happened uh, mainly in France and Germany, which they don't really mm -hmm. touch Vaganova style. So they had this mix of styles going more into neoclassical than classical. Mm -hmm. well, so when they came back, of course, class was uh, Vaganova, the bass was very classical, but when we started doing performances, and I think that that was the best thing about them, is that we were performing at a very young age, constantly, like maybe once a month, they found 
places in Barcelona, around Barcelona, for us to dance. And mostly our repertoire was neoclassical. They were choreographing on us, on what we were better at, to show our, our maximum potential. I don't think I never really did. I did only once, when I was 18, I did a full uh, grandpa. So I think it's uh, what, something that you say I think is really important that uh, schools prepare performances for their students like regularly and also that they create choreographies on them because once you move to the professional world is is actually what I see like the main difference between the young people coming to the company if they have had experience or they they really didn't have anything right yes so I think it's amazing that uh, uh, your school in in Barcelona did that for you guys, I, I think. Did, did you feel it once, once you came in the company? Definitely. You, I, I'm, I'm sure you felt already like you were in another step, yeah. right? I, I didn't have straight stage fright. That was one of the first things. I was confident on stage because for, from, since a very young age, I was given a lot of responsibility. And the good thing also about, mm -hmm. I think they knew, they knew that this was gonna be good. Probably they missed that when they were students and they realized that you need experience before mm -hmm. you get into, into the professional world. Um, and the, the best thing also is uh, in, a, in a company, once you get into a rank, you do that thing and that's it. But when you're in school, they gave us not not equal, equal opportunities, but uh, I could be doing one pas de deux in a gala, but at the same time doing core, like being a, a part of a big number. So they trained me for everything. Mm -hmm. They trained me to be a soloist and then trained me to be core, which I think is very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is, definitely. When you are, uh, I, I always say, even if you don't, like, you don't spend many years in each rank, uh, the best soloists are the best in the corp, and the best principals are the best soloists most of the time. This is it's, it's just the way it works. Mm -hmm. I, I, want to, I want to also ask you about something, because you said you met uh, your, teach, like your life teacher, you said. Like the, that's, something, that's something really amazing that not everyone has, not, not everyone finds. And I find super important to, to trust. Like, I guess, like life put you. Mm -hmm. But some, like, sometimes you have to look for it as well, no? And how, how was it for you? How is it for you to know that there is someone you can come back, so there is someone that has uh, taught you everything? It's, it's amazing. I, but they like, took the time for yeah, you, right? Yes, it, she was very important back then. Both, both Rosé and Joan, and even Vincent, uh, which uh, it was uh, Rosé's uh, husband, mm -hmm. she, his Rosé's husband, uh, and he came into the school when they couldn't come, but I also feel he was a very big part of, of my school. Um, and now as, an, as a professional, every time I have any doubt, every time I doubt myself on stage and I have a, a video of a rehearsal, I send it to them, and they remind me what they taught me. Mm -hmm. they, they reminded me what I was doing good and what I was missing, so it's, it's very important to have this trust in somebody because sometimes in a company yes. it's hard to find because it's people that come and go. But for me, knowing that I'm, I'm her friend also, I mean, it's been a very long time. For eight years I'm outside, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. in Romania now. So I met her when I was 12. It's been 14 years since we met. It's been such a long time. She's such an important mm -hmm. person and friend to me at this point that it, it, I'm very mm -hmm. lucky, very lucky. You know, I I, I, fi I find sometimes not uh, not funny, but I find it's something that people should change. That the, the fact that sometimes I see students that they they say, "Oh, I want to go to Royal Ballet," or "I want to go to English National Ballet School." You know, like I don't know, like any school, Stuttgart Ballet School, you not know, the John Cranko, but they never go somewhere because there is a teacher that they want to practice with. They go for and the I name. And I think in other in other areas in. Mm -hmm. They go for a name, but they don't go for, oh, maybe if I take class with this person, it will really take the best out of me. Mm -hmm. They just go because the name is more important than the actual work. And I find, I find inspiring that you, you found a place where the, uh, there was a teacher that was working well for you and was taking care of, of your work as a dancer, mm -hmm. and you kept going with that. I think it's a bit of luck also. I mean, I think, I think it's something really important. You, you said it before, mm -hmm. life, life put us together at that certain point, no? Um, and I think I was her first mm -hmm. full student. Like, I was her first, uh, the first kid that she took when, she was, when I was young. And she grew mm -hmm. me. 
into a dancer. Right? Mm -hmm. It was the, her first one. So we, w we were a trial for each other, I think, also. It was a bit of an experiment. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it, it, you have to be lucky to find that person also, no? of course. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And you, have, you, also, you also have to be clever that once you find someone that trusts you and that you can trust, then take it, yeah. work hard, take everything, I think, be a sponge. I think you that's know? the hardest as a, as a teenager because I, I also tried to, to go to a bigger school at some point. I, I did an audition at La Scala because I mm -hmm. happened to meet uh, Federico Olivieri in a stage and I liked his style mm -hmm. and he talked nice to me and he said that I, I had conditions. So in, instantly I thought like, oh, cool, that'd be, that'd be fun. No? Like, let's, let's go out, let's see and go to another school. Six years in the same school. Imagine it's a private school. So we had only these teachers. It, it was a very small environment. After a mm -hmm. very long time, you get a bit upset also with the situation, no? and you think yes, you think for sure. that you're gonna get better uh, influence if you if you leave. I thought that too. I I, I made that not mistake, mm -hmm. but because I never knew what happened because I never got to La Scala. But I also wanted to leave at some point because I thought that was mm -hmm. gonna be the best for me. But I really think it would have been a mistake because you need to know that you're improving. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important to know when a teacher cannot give you anymore. And that wasn't the case for me. I was just yes. frustrated because I wasn't working enough and I wasn't getting more results. But it wasn't because of them, it was because of me. So if I had gone to La Scala, there would have been no difference. So I think the mm -hmm. fact that I didn't get into La Scala and in the end I did my last year with them and I was very focused on improving in my last year when I finished the school, I finished the high school. So I had one year in Spain where mm -hmm. I didn't do any school. I did only ballet and I really, really focused and I realized like, so it was all me. It was all my, my mind, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I don't want this to sound like, uh, hey guys, no one go to the big schools. No. I, I, don't, I don't mean this way. No. Like they are great schools and they have great teachers. What I'm saying is, what we are saying now is that you cannot choose a name. You have to choose the place uh, that is better for you. You have to look yourself. You have to really be honest with yourself and be like, what do I, why do I need in this specific moment? You know? Exactly. Maybe you are not, maybe going, like, as you say, maybe going to the big school, it will not change anything and it will be even worse. You don't know, but you really have to make a clear decision and a clever decision because it's really important. I think it's also the, so, yeah, the role of... I think it's great. You, Sorry, it's also the role of the teacher, no? Like yes, when yes. when you have a teacher, in my in my experience, the best thing about my teachers is that, is that they were professionals, so they they knew what that mm -hmm. world was expecting from me, and I think if the teacher is telling you, look, go, go there, they they have good mm -hmm. teachers. You this is good for you. You're gonna learn so much. You have to trust them. But sometimes, if if you can really trust your teacher and they tell you, look, it's a loss. It's a loss of time. You sh you don't have to go. We, we still can teach you more. We still have what to teach you. You should understand that, which is hard as a teenager mm -hmm. or the parents of these teenagers. Yes. You know? Sometimes they, they get influenced by, by the names and instead of seeing the evolution of the, of the child. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. It's great. Great we get to, to share these things. I think it's uh, yep. extremely important mm -hmm. for, for many people. Okay. Let's move on a little bit. Uh, you finished the school in Barcelona, and how did you get to Romania? How did you get to see you? Facebook. <laughs> how was Facebook? Yes. So we had the. I was connecting with all the audition pages possible on the internet. So every audition that appeared mm -hmm. on the internet, I got an email. I applied. Most of them, they said no to me because I'm very short. I don't really reach one meter sixty mm -hmm. at this point, um, so I, I was very short. And for core, in many companies, they need taller girls. So I was aiming for smaller places where they wouldn't care about height, or places that would be have an interest in me as a soloist, maybe. Just because I knew that with mm -hmm. my height, it was so hard to get into core and into big companies. I still tried a lot. I tried Berlin, and I did a bar, and I was kicked out. I tried a lot of places. Um, mm -hmm. And eventually I got this uh, audition from Sibiu on Facebook. I checked the website. It was a small company. It seemed fun. There was, they had some performance, full, full performances posted on their website. And I 
it, it sounded interesting, mm-hmm. but I didn't even know what, what Sibiu was. I didn't even know that it existed, that city, that small city lost in Romania. Mm-hmm. But in the end, I sent an email. They answered back asking me for a video of a variation, repertory variation, and I had a nutcracker from when we did uh, a full nutcracker in my school, which is, by the way, very important also that my school at this point, now in 2021, they have a full production of Nutcracker, Coppelia and Giselle. So Mm -hmm. they put their students through a whole performance and I I had the the chance to be Sugar Plum Mm -hmm. in my last year. So I I sent them that video and they gave me a contract immediately on email. So for me, it was heaven that I didn't have Mm -hmm. to spend the money on the traveling to then get an all. It was very frustrating to audition. The audition is so hard. So, yeah. So that's how I got my magical contract and in September I was there. (laughs) I have to say I don't know I don't know if you remember but the, this for for the people uh, I danced with uh, Ada in CBU and actually on June that same year I still didn't have any contract. I remember. And I spoke with her and she yes, she was the one telling me please send this company and and let's hope they give you a contract and they gave me the contract as well. And we danced together. So as you can see like, sometimes and we danced together yeah. true. Not so long time, but we danced together. No, but I remember we did... I, what uh, I want to say is that... Continue. We get there later. <laughs> I, I, I just want to say that uh, it's, it's incredible how sometimes uh, having contacts or knowing people or, or just uh, go to the internet and look the most, all these small things sometimes give you contracts and then there's uh, someone that is traveling the world yep. for one year, spending so much money and they don't get anything. And it has nothing to do with talent. It has nothing to do with how good they are. In the right time. It's just about yes. being there and know the person. It, it, it happens. It happens many times. No, I, I was going to say that we danced saying? together. We had our first uh, soloist role together. We did... Uh, well, you did La Vivandier with someone else and I did La Vivandier with another boy. But then in Four Seasons, we danced Spring together. And mm-hmm. then we did Clara and Fritz mm-hmm. together. So... The little time you yes. were in Sibiu, we actually, we actually got and the pastorala yes. and the and we'll, mirlitons we did together. Mm-hmm. So it was fun. And the Co- Copelia. Copelia as well. We, we were partners together. in Copelia, yes. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> friends, Copelia's friends. You, that was, was so much fun. <laughs> yes. I, I wasn't a long time in Sibiu, but I, I, no. I really keep it in my heart. It was, it was a really nice time. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I have really good memories. And they put us on a stage straight away. And that was amazing as well. Yeah, and for the with, first with big company. roles, with responsibility, yeah. Yes, it was, it was, uh, I think it was a good choice to just get there, get out on the stage and don't think it twice. Like, fresh from school, go to dance. That, that was the, yep. that was the thing. It was incredible. So, how long, how long actually were you dancing in, in I was CBU? three years in CPU. And uh, from very early, as same as you, I got the chance to do soloist roles. After you left, uh, we had the premiere of Corsair and I danced Gulnara also, which mm-hmm. it was quite kind of a big step for me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so after one year, when the second season started, I was given Giselle and uh, I was going to be third cast for Swan Lake, but circumstances happened and I danced the premiere of Swan Lake. And eventually I did Aurora, and I did Don Q, and I did the premiere of La Female Garde, and I did like all these big roles in one season, with barely no rehearsals, with not a very, not good, she was a good teacher, but um, we had this woman, Tatiana, teaching in the company at the time. And she, did, uh, mm-hmm. she had been a dancer, but she hadn't been a principal in the same roles that I did. So she was a principal in Mirta, she wasn't a principal in Mercedes, but she didn't do the, the big role. So the way she helped me wasn't mm-hmm. what, it, what it should have been for a debut. But uh, I, I handled a lot on my own. I handled a lot thanks to Stefan, to my boyfriend. Uh, I handled a lot thanks to Ovidio, who mm-hmm. was a, a very important dancer in Romania that landed in Sibiu. Uh, when I was dancing, so he took me and he he taught me mm-hmm. so much and he gave me so much confidence. Yeah. And then I did one more year in the company. Oh, that's that's mm-hmm. incredible. All these ballets. Well, so I was 20 and I did all these many, many, many roles mm-hmm. uh, very fast, kind of self-taught. 
and it gave me a lot of confidence and a lot of experience and trust in myself on saving things also, which I think it's important. No, when when you're young mm-hmm. in a big company and you're given a soloist role, you're so afraid of failing. Which yes. I think of, you always have to have this respect for failure, no? But at the same time, you need to know how to save the save any situation. So I think my experience in Sibiu gave me that that fast thinking on stage to being able to solve problems. I think or, I think it's uh, uh, when you are so young, somehow. it's like a, yep. you have something good and something bad, something good that you are maybe less afraid, in the sense that you think less, you just go. And you think uh, you are on the top of the world, but at the same time, it's kind of hard to handle so much pressure and handle yourself uh, because when when you are given so much so early, then it's I, I think it's really exciting but really scary. <laughs> the, there is there is this, and, and if you are not strong strong minded, I think it's really hard, and not I, I think not everyone can can handle this this type of pressure, this type of pressure leading a company and leading a, a yeah, performance. Yeah, I think also uh, so many people want that, no? They, I think we all as the dancers, we all, most of us, we all have the ambition to, to do this kind of, of roles and have this responsibility, but until you're not there and you don't do it, you don't realize that it's not just wanting to do it, that you actually have to do it. You actually have to go through the whole ballet, the whole technique involved. And it's a lot of work. It's it's not easy. Mm-hmm. And sometimes if I sometimes I felt I couldn't complain to certain people, maybe like if I felt tired or pressured or the teacher was a bit rude to me about what I was doing and they were telling me like, oh, but don't complain. I wish I was doing what you mm-hmm. were doing. And I was thinking, like, well, maybe you should be careful what you wish because once you're there the work is real the work is so mm-hmm. real you know mm. mm-hmm. and i i found like I- in my experience also getting many roles from a really young mm-hmm. age even when i thought like at the beginning i thought like oh i think this performance went really well but then when i analyze what i was doing like when i think about the role you no know, and how i play the role how I find myself disconnecting from the role many mm-hmm. times, or uh, how I find that uh, what I was thinking that my my face was doing it, it wasn't, wasn't. That. and then I would check the video and I'm like, that's not the feeling that I wanted to show. Uh-huh. And these are super so small things that no one knows and no one thinks about, but makes the the Big total difference. difference. Yes, you know, like when you can ex- like really express what is in your heart and what is in your mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's very yes, important. A part of all the technical side and the I partnering. Think, I think it's very important to, when you rehearse, to rehearse everything. Like I'm very annoyed, totally. even at this point. I'm 26 now. I have eight years of experience in my back, and when I in I'm in the opera, in a big company, and I see dancers mm-hmm. that mark in rehearsals or that don't do the upper body that they just focus on technique, you know? It, sometimes it annoys me, like you're wasting the opportunity of this rehearsal mm-hmm. to do it full. If you don't do it full every time, then you go on stage and mm-hmm. you lose yourself. It's it's such a big thing to do a big role. If you don't know exactly what your body, if you don't tell your body so many mm-hmm. times in rehearsal what it has to do, you're gonna go on stage and you won't be able to do it, you know? So I think it's it's very important, especially when you're starting. After you have certain experience, it's different. But when you're starting and you're given a soloist role, don't mark the face. Mm-hmm. Don't mark the upper body. Don't mark when you need to stand on the side. You still need to be present because all eyes are on you. It's a very big responsibility. And if you don't rehearse like this, mm-hmm. then you go on stage and kaput. It's bad, you know? And a lot of people mm-hmm. trust their artistry, yes. you know, and they just focus on their technique because I want to do two pirouettes. Yeah, but if you do two pirouettes, that might mm-hmm. go wrong on stage and you're going to finish it. You know, I, I had a... Get a stressed face. Then what do you do? Do You should try those two pirouettes, but have, have the nice face you need for that role. So then you go on stage and if the pirouette goes wrong, you can mm-hmm. cover it with your upper body. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's like experience and professionality. You know, I I had a ballet master. The first time I, 
I did Swan Lake. I did it with my with my partner, and we both uh, premiere the Swan, uh, Swan Lake. We never danced before, and we used to have three and four hour rehearsals, for example, just for the second act. And at the end, it was it was really tough. It was really really tough, and the your legs will hurt not just from the dancing but from the standing. And I remember like she she would tell to us at the end of the rehearsal, I'm really sorry, but I have to break you because you ha you have to yeah. be tired because you need to put some feelings that just from they just come from the really tiredness. There are there are some things there are some things you have to express that comes from from a point that you don't, you have no idea. You know, uh, how important is to like, get to a point where you can take the in the feelings that are so super deep exactly. in you. And you need, you need to get to that point and then you are like, okay, now I can channel that without this rehearsal. But how important is someone that comes to you and say, listen, yes, you are showing love, but I want to show, I want to mm -hmm. see that you are desperate for her. I want to see that your love is bigger than yourself exactly. and I don't see it. And then you, you need to get to that point and then you're like, okay, now I understand, now I can put this out. Yeah. So how, how, yeah. how important is all these small things, you know? How, uh, it's also what makes a professional dancer, how you behave on the studio, you know, once you understand all these things. Mm -hmm. you, you really need to understand what means to be professional, what means to have a place in an opera house. I think, I think we, we, we were lucky that we got so many chances when we were small, but we were also, um, I, I guess, we come from a place where we, we really, how can mm -hmm. I say? You need that to be to be a dancer. Mm -hmm. You need you need this passion. You need it because it's it's too consuming. If you don't love it, if you're not ready to consume yourself until that level for ballet, it's better that you don't do something else. Okay, yeah. and let's try to move on a little bit. Um, after CBU, you you move to to Bucharest. So in the same country, but to the main company, let's say, a bigger company, bigger repertoire, bigger uh, amount of dancers. Did you feel like, did you feel in that moment it was the right moment? And what was the reason for you to move to a bigger place when you were given everything? So, CB was a very good experience for me and I didn't think I was done with the company. I still have a little bit the feeling that I left a bit too early, but circumstances changed there we were performing in a big theater well it wasn't huge theater but we could do a full swan lake there with ensemble and everything that stage closed mm -hmm. that theater closed for refurbishment so for my last season in Sibiu we had to mm -hmm. beg for performances anywhere else which it wasn't a problem uh -huh. because I knew what that meant from my experience in school that I could perform I even performed in the street on pointers when I was younger you know so I didn't mm -hmm. mind that the stage was small and that we were traveling and touring around Romania to small theaters and doing galas here and there but I felt that I wasn't growing as a dancer mm -hmm. anymore because I I stepped from having that principal responsibility constantly to doing a couple of galas and then what, maybe one swan lake but then we had to do more contemporary productions that would fit in a smaller space and I started not losing that responsibility mm -hmm. feeling. So uh, I I wasn't growing anymore. That that was my point. I felt like, okay, if I have a swan lake again, I'm going to do the same swan lake as last time because I, I, I'm losing experience. I'm, I'm not being able to grow on the roles anymore because I'm not performing them as much. So I thought it was the right time to, to mm -hmm. leave. Eventually they got the, the stage back, but... At that point, if I had stayed, I think I would have gone down. So Bucharest offered uh, a very big mm -hmm. audition because there was a change on the on the direction. So there were many many positions open. That's a, that's, and, uh, that's great. I mean, it's sad. No, that uh, the company had to pass through that that time. But I totally understand. I think I always say, uh, even here when I when I when I was dancing in Ostrava, I always say to my director that like, I will be here as long as I feel challenged, as long as I feel like there is something more for me, that there is something that I can, exactly. I can aspire exactly. to, you know. And in the moment that I will not feel this way, will be my moment to leave. 
So I think it's really important that you, you understood, okay, maybe this company will be better in a couple of years, but for now I need something else because no one is giving your time back. <laughs> as, uh, as bad as this sounds, exactly. we, are, we have a limit time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, it's a very short career, so... It's great, great, great to hear your... Yeah, and I moved to, yes, yes. I moved to Bucharest, mm -hmm. I moved to Bucharest not knowing mm -hmm. what, I was, I was a bit afraid of Bucharest, because I came from my private school with my private teacher to CPU, which was a small company that trusted me from the beginning, I didn't mm -hmm. really have to fight for the roles in CBU that the chance mm -hmm. came upon me and then I did my best with it. Um, but then I was very afraid to go to Bucharest and not mm -hmm. being strong enough for such a big company. Mm -hmm. It's a company that has over 90 dancers. Mm -hmm. They're not all inactive, but it's a very big company. And I, I put this mindset on saying, look, I have the experience. Anything mm -hmm. they give me, I'm going to be the best at. If they put me last mm -hmm. swan in core because I'm this short, and there's nothing else I can do, I'm going to be the best one in that core, in that performance. So I did, that, that was my mindset without knowing anything mm -hmm. about the company. I didn't know what to expect from the company, especially with the director change. Mm -hmm. It was hard to, to have an expectation. And after a week there, they tried me as a soloist. They put me under the title of a mm -hmm. soloist, knowing what I had done in, in CBU until then. And I never stepped in core while I was in Bucharest. <laughs> so I'm very, very lucky. Lucky in the, in the sense that work, mm -hmm. uh, the work for core is so hard. It's terribly hard. So I'm lucky in the sense mm -hmm. that I, I skipped, I skipped uh, this step in Bucharest because it's very hard. But uh, they, again, they trusted me very, very fast. So I had to use these little skills of knowing how to handle myself on stage to prove mm -hmm. that I could do the same thing that I did in Sibiu. Prove it. Prove that I can do it in a big opera, which is still overwhelming. I can imagine I the that that feeling of having to prove yourself after so much work, after the done, after having done so much. It's not. It's not something too easy to do. It's also, I think, not everyone is willing to leave the comfort place. Being like, oh, I'm a principal here. I have done a lot. I don't want to step down of my small throne. You know, but I think. I yeah. think it's important also. I think it's, it's mm -hmm. good for our ego, it's good for our heart to, to be challenged this way. Uh, yes, and see, definitely. And see what definitely. is outside mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. experience with that. Wow, so you tell me like they, they, they gave yeah. you already solos from the first moment as well. They, they saw potential in you and that you, you, could, you could handle yeah. that, right? I think they trusted my experience more than what mm -hmm. they saw because they didn't see much when I first came into the company. We were doing some classes and our first performance mm -hmm. was a gala, an opening gala of the season because we had this new director and he brought guests from mm -hmm. other companies. We had Nicole mm -hmm. Tamani, we had uh, Lauren Cuthbertson. We had big names coming into the gala, which was great. And I was given mm -hmm. the main pas de deux for I remember I saw, I saw that video. The mm -hmm. So they really didn't know yeah. I've seen, I've seen. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I, they didn't know me. They, I had mm -hmm. been for a week or two weeks in the company and they decided to give me that big padito. So I think they relied a lot on what they heard from CB because Bucharest mm -hmm. heard, heard from CB. Ovidio had been in CB. Ovidio mm -hmm. Matejanko had been in CB and had been my partner. And also he came back at the same time as, as I went to Bucharest. He went back to Bucharest. So I think probably he... He told them also that they could trust me, and I danced with him, uh, theme and variations. But it was mm -hmm. such a big deal. I, I can was imagine. Hitting myself. <laughs> it was also like a really oh, different style. My God, yeah, and such a hard ballet. It's not like yes, balancing. I had never done balancing. You meet me as a child, mm -hmm. and you say this girl will never be able to do balancing. So I had to work wow. hard. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. But this is like this is the, the beauty of ballet as well, no? Now you can look back and be like, wow, I did that. Like, that's, that's really, really amazing. Yeah, definitely. And how, how do you find the work in the new company? Because mm -hmm. uh, I, I can imagine you, you had the chance to work with better dancers, like not better dancers, but different dancers and 
different teachers and different styles. Do you, do you think that mm -hmm. re, uh, this had had a good impact in your career? Um, it, it did, of course it did. Anything different is always a challenge. Trying different styles is always a challenge and trying to deal with different personalities it's also a challenge. In Sibiu, we had the one teacher at a time that would change, but we would have only one person every time. And uh, the responsible of the company, here in Bucharest, there were thousands of teachers. So it was, it was a very big challenge to go to Bucharest and have to deal with different styles, which was very positive, but it, it was a very big challenge. And having to deal with different teachers and their mm -hmm. personalities. Because in CBO, I was very used to working with one person, whoever was in front. Um, they would change every month, every so months. We would have a different teacher, but there was one person in front all the time. And now I had mm -hmm. these many teachers. Um, you would do class with one and then rehearsal with the other. And maybe in class, they would ask you to do certain things that they wouldn't match in the rehearsal. And then the teacher in the rehearsal tells you, you need to work like this in class. And there was a bit of conflict also mm -hmm. like not mm -hmm. all the teachers go into the same direction which is very hard as a dancer to to try to follow um mm -hmm. and the change it was good in time but at the first uh, the first contact with the company being so many people as i said and especially as a soloist i didn't have all the performances i was sharing roles all the time so i had to watch a lot of performances from outside mm -hmm. that was so weird for me because in CBO I never missed one show I was always on stage doing principal soloist or core and all of a sudden imagine no, I, apart from this gala that, that you saw my first role in the company was Cupid so for the whole month we were preparing a couple of shows of Don Q I had 30 minute rehearsal a day shared with another girl mm -hmm. and I oh, went okay. I went from rehearsing different ballets like maybe i was doing swan lake principal plus another ballet core in one day in Sibiu. like i would constantly be rehearsing all day six hours in the studio point shoes on and then i go there and i have class very big break and 30 minute rehearsal so it was very hard for me to adapt to having less work mm -hmm. less quantity of work and i felt a bit useless a lot of the time i felt I think it's all, it's a bit of the ego part, no? I, I was so needed in Sibiu. Not me. Mm -hmm. All of us. We were needed all the time. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Bucharest and... Eh. And then the teacher that was my teacher, she was also someone else's teacher. So sometimes I felt like she didn't care enough about me. Mm -hmm. That she didn't... They, they don't... Uh, they don't focus... Not focus, but they don't get so involved with the yes. performances, the teachers either, because she does one, you do the other, then I have this other performance coming on and I need to teach this and that. So I felt a bit disconnected from everything. And I mm -hmm. also felt the need of approval. Mm -hmm. like every, I, I kind of lost control of what I was doing. I needed to be told, yes, this is good. Mm -hmm. To be yeah, sure yeah. of what I was doing on stage. And mm -hmm. that's bad. <laughs> that's something that it took me a lot of time to have control again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's bad, but uh, I would say like at the same time, it's it's kind of difficult because what I, what I realized after all these years is how important it is that someone in front of you cares about the work they are doing and and helping you with that because you know like I say our time is limited and if we are if we have the feeling like we are yeah. losing our time it's the worst we can have you know like okay I'm coming here I love what I do but. Mm -hmm. they seem to don't care or I, I don't know if it's enough exactly. so I think it's important to be strong by yourself and of course uh, be be good enough to sometimes teach yourself and be like okay uh, it's fine I have to I have to do my work myself and then we will see what happens but at the same time I wish more teachers were mm -hmm. taking really care of what they do because they have they yes. really have the power to yes. impact many lives they do you know, they, they are in charge of the mood, they are in charge of many things in a studio and when you find someone that is not think, even thinking mm -hmm. about this, it's yeah, quite I frustrating. Agree. I understand they have a lot of work, they have a lot of dancers and a lot of responsibility, but for us, it's that show. 
for us every performance is a whole world and we want it to be perfect mm -hmm. so you need the collaboration to be very positive mm -hmm. if you don't have a good relationship with your teacher it's very hard to go confident on stage yeah. totally i believe mm -hmm. i want to quick ask you maybe we don't go so much in depth into this but uh, how uh, covid situation has been for you i i guess there's a lot to say but oh, <laughs> terrible. terrible poof <laughs> see terrible terrible because um well the company closed in march like in most places um and we had a teacher that uh, tried to help us and she organized uh, mm -hmm. classes online but it's it's just so hard to do ballet at home like yeah you got a bar mm -hmm. you're very lucky you have a bar <laughs> i didn't have a bar you know i had to hold myself to the kitchen mm -hmm. counter um the floor was slippery it was hot there was no room and at the beginning it was fun you know because you thought like oh maybe this takes a month like let's try and make it fun i was filming myself mm -hmm. posting it on instagram i was a happy girl you know but when i realized that this was going to be for long and that even if the little training you do at home the, the bar you do it cannot comp it's something but it mm -hmm. cannot compare to to the physical level we need as mm -hmm. a professional dancer in the company i i became so frustrated and I didn't have any motivation to do those classes. I pushed myself to do them mm -hmm. most of the time. I quit also on doing online class at some point because I, I was sad. But I remember sometimes doing that class, checking if the teacher was mm -hmm. watching me or something at that point. Like I wasn't even putting effort into it, like only when mm -hmm. the teacher would see me. And when I would close the call, I would I was crying. But that's not ballet. Ballet is not meant to mm -hmm. happen in your kitchen, <laughs> you know. So it was very hard to adapt. I think that it, if it would happen again now, another wave, and we would be forced to be back home in the end, I would have to like have a very strong mindset and organize. Maybe organize mm -hmm. my time a little bit better, not knowing now what to expect from it. But when it was the first time that this. Yes. ever happened you know no one alive has lived this before so there was no one that you could go and say mm -hmm. oh how did you do this how did you get through this sane and no one could help you you know my teacher my delightful teacher she was telling me just like keep working that's the only thing i can tell you is that it will pass and you will want to be ready so just keep working but i was working in tears like it was not satisfactory oh, at all definitely. so hard it was yeah. very hard yeah and then uh, the company opened in uh, over the summer in september we were back doing classes it took us a couple of months we were trying to do a gala an online no not online i think we were gonna have audience but it didn't happen in the end so we were rehearsing for nothing um then we had another two month break uh and then in slowly slowly we started uh, working more constantly we had a couple of uh, dancers a couple well, well, a lot of dancers had covid so sometimes we would have to stop the whole company for two weeks because we were mm -hmm. all in direct contact um and then we did a couple of performances online and slowly slowly we had even a premiere of Coppelia with 70% nice. audience which yes. is a huge thing huge well thing. let's hope yeah and we ended up working a lot the last two months we had many perf uh, one performance a week which is kind of more than what mm -hmm. we had before so it was good and yeah, we, yeah. Let, let's hope that things start to open again and that we don't have to suffer this again but as you say like in the bright side in the bright side hopefully. we are we are now we know what to expect now so hopefully we, we can exactly. manage ourselves exactly. better this time than the last time mm -hmm. but yes better. let's hope it will not happen okay now big question mm -hmm. what means success for you it's such a big word, isn't it? <laughs> um, I, uh, yes. it, it, was, it was funny when you posted the video because I had been thinking about that for a while. Like I was telling my mom over the summer that I wanted to write some sort of post on, on a blog or something about it because I had all this information in my head that I wanted to put down. So I, I've, I've been wanting to talk about success for a while now. So I'm very happy that mm -hmm. you gave me the chance. But I think the point of success is happiness. Like you're only going to be successful in life when you're happy, you know, and f a, mm -hmm. a very big part of that happiness for me is not being alone. So in anything I do, knowing that you have people mm -hmm. that supports your decisions and that is there for you no matter what, I think that's 
that's what makes me happy and that's what makes me successful in any level if you're very ambitious mm -hmm. like all us dancers know we are a very ambitious ambitious people you have to know that you're being challenged i think that's also a big part of of success like it doesn't even if you're mm -hmm. 20 years old and you reach the top of your career what else are you going to do with your life like i think success means also being able to evolve constantly like you, there's mm -hmm. not a peak to reach but all of it you need to do it while being happy if you're not happy if you're too focused on the one thing and it frustrates you plus you're alone you're not going to be successful that's that's probably mm -hmm. the the main way to to summon this no i think success for me is happiness then everyone can put it in their own fields and define their own happiness which is also a very big word but i think that there's no success without happiness for sure mm -hmm. definitely you know i find many people i i include myself in in one of these people that one of the things that attracts them the most from dance is the fact that uh, there is, you will never be perfect that is always trying to achieve perfection knowing you cannot be yeah and for me for me this has a, a under meaning which is that what you love from the dance is the journey mm. not the destination yeah. what you love from the dance is that you have to keep going <laughs> but not many people see that you know many people feels like i love the feeling that i will never get there mm -hmm. but they don't understand that this mean what this means is that the you journey. love the journey yeah working dancing every day is what makes you happy not being the principal dancer <laughs> you know if if when you go to bed uh, at the end of the day you feel like what what is the thing that you are like okay without this i cannot be is dance you know or is a, or is family or is a happiness you know like uh, laughing is not the role you dance or the paper saying this or how much money is in your bank account and may, maybe yes maybe for some people it's the how much money is in the bank account yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you say people, uh, for some people, the success would be being rich or having a lot of money, no? Mm -hmm. Well, okay, what do you do with that money? Like, why do you want the money in your bank account? Yeah, the thing is like... Use it for what? Like, that, it's, not, it's not having the money that, that motivates you. It's what you can do with that money, no? Like, having mm -hmm. a comfortable life, traveling all over. But, and at the same time, I go back to my question. Are you really happy like this? If you would do all of this alone, like... Wouldn't mm -hmm. you be more happy if you're able to share this with people that love you and support you? Mm -hmm. So even if you have a lot of money, would you just travel the world alone? Would that really make you happy? Yeah, I, to no, I, I totally. Think, I think it's. I totally agree with you. I just don't know like how everyone feels about it. You know, I I, I cannot be inside of the yeah, brains of also, everyone. Yeah, I think also what this makes me think is that we cannot judge anyone because. As, same as success, happiness has different meanings for everyone. Mm -hmm. So go, going back to ba ballet, ballet world, no? Um, as I said, I'm, I would be successful as long as I'm happy. And for me, the biggest thing about being happy is being surrounded by people that support me. Mm -hmm. So if I would put myself in another company, maybe bigger, maybe better, maybe more renowned company, but people would be so competitive that I, would, I wouldn't have who to lean on. I wouldn't be happy. So for mm -hmm. me, getting to dance in the Royal Ballet, for example, wouldn't be a success if, if I wouldn't get to have a group of people that helps mm -hmm. me through it. I think for me, communication is, is very important. No? Instead, I prefer to be in a company that is not so famous, um, but in the end, I'm doing ballet the same as anywhere else. Mm -hmm. you know? like, I'm not doing less ballet for being in a smaller place on your, on in a less known place. Place. I think that's also very important for dancers especially to know. You know where you want to go, you know what's your goal, you know what you want. I think that we all need to be surrounded by a good support, you know, good group of people mm -hmm. that helps you go through all of this because dance is very hard. And then, I kind of lost what I was, I was saying, but <laughs> um, you, you have to have your goal. You have to have your goal. I lost it. Well, I, I think but yeah I mean you yes. can 
want to, it's it's good to have the ambition to be in a big company but you also need to know what you have to expect from yourself in that company and mm -hmm. what you're willing to yes to sacrifice or not sacrifice you know that's the thing like you have to know also where you go and what they will what what are the what is the situation you will find there you know about the people about the teachers about the the roles about you know like there's so many things that we don't think at the beginning we are just like i need a job or i just want to be in that company but you have no idea how things are there you know and sometimes yeah, sometimes it's exactly. good sometimes you have to go and you have to experience by yourself but if you but can you also have to be ready to leave you also yes. have to be ready to change, like don't mm -hmm. settle, don't ever settle. If you go to a place, your dream company, but then things are not under your expectations. And again, I'm not talking about roles here. I think, I think getting a, a promotion and getting certain roles, it shouldn't be your goal. Your goal would be to do them right. Like if mm -hmm. you're that lucky to get that promotion and get those roles, you need to know that you're dancing well. Why do you want to be in a place where you get big roles, but you're not doing them properly? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think in the end, the, we all want to work. I think as long as you're working, working hard and working mm -hmm. smart, you're in the right place. But if yes. you don't feel you're working smart, if you feel that results are mediocre and you really care about ballet, you're going to realize that that's not your place. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And... Let me ask you the last two questions, which will be what advice would you give your younger self? That's the first. Mm -hmm. Work. <laughs> <laughs> work, work hard. I think uh, I, I relied a lot on s some of my conditions and the things that were easy for me and that I knew that they were good. I think as a teenager, I didn't work hard enough for what was uh, wasn't good enough for me so mm -hmm. I'm, I was never a very technician a very big technician um, I struggled to turn I struggled to jump and only now at 24 25 years old now I'm 26 I think I'm starting to understand how it works mm -hmm. and this is in no in no case my teacher's fault this is the way I was I was thinking at that point and it was hard and it was scary I was afraid to fail so I, I wasn't trying enough for the things that were hard. So I just focused on what I had good. I had legs up, I had a good adage work. So I relied on doing that very, very well. And mm -hmm. I tried to hide myself in what I wasn't doing so well. But in the end, when you go on stage, you have to do it all. So I think I would tell myself to get over myself <laughs> mm -hmm. and not be afraid to try to improve because I'm going to need it in the future, you know, and I'm struggling now to work for certain things that I should have worked when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that honest answer. I think it's, yeah. <laughs> it's incredible to, to hear this, yeah, really. And what advice would we you need give? To, we need to know what we are... So Sorry? Let, let me say this, I think this is important. We, we need to know what we are good at mm -hmm. and what we are bad at, because in ballet, we all know everything about each other. Mm -hmm. You cannot hide anything. Your flaws, your, your the good aspects of your dancing, everyone is gonna know everything. Mm -hmm. So, it's it's important to know what you can rely on, but it's important to know also what you need to work on and and work on it. You know, and don't be shy mm -hmm. to to work on things that it's gonna go bad at the beginning, but you need to try and try and try until you reach a certain control about them. Mm -hmm. I'm never gonna have a sip of us jump. But I need to learn how to use my plie to have a better jump. Yes. And I need to focus on that, you know. So if, if you so just true. let these things go, it's people are still going to see that you're bad at jumping. And they're going to see that you're not working on it. So mm -hmm. they're going to judge you and they're going to call you lazy. So it's very important to know what your flaws are and work on them. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and... What advice would you give to someone that just finished the school and will start in a company? I would say try everywhere. I think this is something I've said before and I've told every person I know. Even if you are crazy talented, you've won all the competitions in the world. I have uh, Antonio Casalino in my mm -hmm. head right now. We all know Antonio Casalino since he was this small, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, now he, he got a contract as a soloist in Munich. It's mm -hmm. great. But... I, won I wonder if he tried to get uh, contracts everywhere else. I mean, probably it just fell from the sky, but mm -hmm. um, 
you know, I think even if you're that talented, there might be some restrictions that, that your ideal company might not have enough positions that year for you. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think it's important to try everywhere. And you might not even get the chance to choose, which is what happened to me too, no? I tried everywhere and I got one contract in Sibiu and then when I changed to Bucharest, they I was lucky, but, you know, I didn't have where to choose from. Mm-hmm. So try everywhere, get as many options as you can, and then you choose what's better for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah give, give yourself a chance. It's all right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have reached the end of this conversation. I want to really thank you for your honesty, for your words. I think many people can find this very helpful. I think it's important that we talk about I things. I hope so. I think it's important also for people to hear uh, the experiences of different people, uh, maybe not famous people that maybe we have lived. Exactly. Think, yeah. all different type of things, you know, it hasn't been the path of flowers. And mm-hmm. I think it's I think it's very nice to to speak about these things. I hope you have been comfortable yeah, and you. you enjoy it also to oh, yes. to talk. <laughs> yes. yes, you know I talk a lot anyway. It's not hard for me to to speak. <laughs> That's great. I think it's great. Yeah. I think it's great. Uh, I'm I'm so happy we had this conversation. I I really feel happy about it. Me too. Me too. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we Thank see you each other. so much.